Okay, so I decided I'm going to do a, a little mini crash course on the pen tool, and hopefully I'll be able to go over um, the fundamentals of what I think you need to be pretty adept at the um, adept at the uh, the pen tool. Now, um, <clears throat> I'm going to try to you know go over it, especially the things that I've noticed that a lot of the tutorials generally don't cover that I think of you know essential for you to really get what the pen tool is all about. Now, uh, I use Flash primarily, but um, what I'll be doing or covering will be applicable pretty much to Photoshop as well. All right, so you'll be fine if um, you're going to use this in Photoshop or Illustrator or you want to apply it in all three programs. It doesn't matter. Now, um, <clears throat> what I did here, actually, I uh, made a list of some things I wanted to cover and go over uh, just to make sure I hit everything. All right, And um, some of it is just vocabulary stuff. Uh, you know, just to um, have you guys understand what the pen tool is and what it does. Now, uh, let's get into it. Now, first and foremost, um, it's important to understand that a uh, you're talking about path, okay? The term path, it pretty much means a line, okay? Um, or um, a series of lines. It can be a line or a series of lines, meaning it's consisted of two or more points that connects a line, and the line may be straight or curved. So now let's activate the uh, pen tool. Um, <clears throat> uh, so this is the pen tool. And if you notice, uh, you have a nip. And you have, it's very important to pay attention to the cursor, OK, and the little icons that you see next to it. Now, the icon that's there now is an X. Whenever you see the X, it means that you're, the, the, the software is prepared to start a new path or a new line, OK? so. Um, Wherever I click now, and, and notice now I'm just going to tap and not hold. I'm just going to tap. There you go. I tapped. See, right here, there's a point. Now, <clears throat> there's a point there, so that's my starting point. Now, wherever I click anywhere else, that's going to be the second point, and automatically a line is going to be created. There you go. So I tapped. I didn't hold. Okay? Now, let me just explain something really quickly. Um, okay, and then I'll move away. Now, uh, it's important to understand that. Um, shall I use the selection tool? Okay, good. Now, when you look here, you'll see this. This is considered uh, an anchor point, anchor point, anchor point. All right? So, right now, there's the first anchor point, second anchor point, third anchor point. All right? Actually, I'm going to create another one. Uh, just like that. Okay, good. Now, one anchor point, two anchor point, three anchor point, four anchor points. All right. Now, this, the line between two anchor points is considered uh, a segment. All right. Um, this is a segment. This is a segment. So you have three segments and four anchor points. Now, important thing to notice is that. Um, there are different types of. There are two main types of anchor po anchor points. Is a uh, smooth anchor point and a corner anchor point. A smooth anchor point is an anchor point that it that joins two segments that are continuous. Okay. So in in other words, if this you can imagine if this anchor point were not here, the line would just continue. There's no change in direction that occurs at this anchor point. Okay. Now if you look at this anchor point, there's a change in direction, a noticeable change in direction, a sharp change in direction that occurs here. So this is considered a corner anchor point, and this is continued, con uh, considered a smooth anchor point because it joins two continuous segments. So in other words, it seemed as if this were just one continuous line. And here you can see that this is definitely two distinct lines because there's a sharp change in direction. Okay, uh, Not the most important thing to know, but it's good to be aware of it. All right. Now, the second thing is uh, very important is that each anchor point consists of a can carry a uh, direction handle. Okay, uh, well, actually, each point has two direction handles. All right, and um, you generally don't see the direction handles until you hold. When you click, you hold and drag. So let's activate the pen tool again. All right, so I click, 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 click. I'm not dragging. I'm not holding at any point and dragging. I'm just clicking. So, so that's how you create straight lines using the pen tool. If I want to create a horizontal line, I click. Um, let's activate the pen tool again. You click and hold shift down. 
and it will create a horizontal line for you. If you want to create a vertical line, you click and hold shift and it will create a vertical line for you, just like that. All right. So whenever you want to create a horizontal line, you make the first point and then you hold down shift and it will make it horizontal. You want to make a vertical line, you click and hold down shift and it will make a vertical line for you. All right. Pretty useful stuff to know. And uh, another quick thing before I go into direction handles is whenever you want to start a new a new path or a new line, you hit click, 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 click. So say you're done with that line, you want to create a new path, you hit P again. So now notice the X appears, right? So now it's showing that I am creating I'm creating a new path. Now if you look at the nib icon, there isn't anything there. It means that I'm actively still continuing this line. See that? Now this is considered this is considered an open path. This is considered an, an open path as well. Now, right now I'm still actively making this path. If I want to close it, I go to the initial point and then you'll see that little that see that little circle pop up. It means that by clicking on this anchor point I'm about to close this path. If I click on it and then I close it. See now you see the X that pretty much means it's done with this path and it's asking me, it's telling me that whenever I click again, I'm going to be creating a new path. See that? I'm not clicking and dragging or holding, I'm just clicking. And that's it. Click, hit P, new path. Hit P, new path. Hit P, new path. So whenever you want to end a path and start a new one, you just hit P and it'll automatically start, right? Now, how do you join two paths? So say for example, okay you have all these lines I wanna join this path to this path what do you do you activate the pen tool you go to the end either end of this path see that see the little icon changes from an X to a diagonal line there you go it changes see that changes now I click on this anchor point to activate it now what I've done by clicking on this point is I'm telling the period the, the, the pen tool that I'm ready to join continue this path so I can either click on this point or I can click somewhere else so I can click here for example see that or I could do this I could go here see once you move the cursor next to the point the diagonal line appears you click on it it says that it's ready and you can join it to whatever line you want I could join it to this line see that or I could join it to this line and there you go alright and you can join any any point you can join any path you want so I can join this path hitting the pen tool I see changes you wait until the changes to diagonal that means by clicking on this point I've activated this path and now I'm ready to continue it so I can either just continue the path somewhere else or I can attach it to somewhere I'm gonna attach it right here and there you go alright and notice that by passing through these path by uh, by passing the <laughs> through uh, this path and this path and this path it has joined them so if I should click away, you'll see that now it has joined all of them. All right. So that's how you join paths together. That's how you end path, and that's how you uh, begin new ones. All right. Now let's go into the direction handle. Now, the direction handles are pretty much what you use to change a straight line to a curve. Okay. So let's draw a straight line. No, I'm not holding. See, I just clicked. All right. Now. If I want to make these line curves, what I can do is activate the direction handles on each of these anchor points or the anchor points that I choose. Okay, so each anchor point has uh, two direction handles, one direction handle for either side of the point. So, in other words, if I activate this direction handle, it will this handle uh, will can be used to manipulate. The curves on either side and I'll do that by starting a new line so I click when I, when I click here I'm gonna hold click and hold I'm holding notice that the the nib is not there anymore now you're seeing that black arrow it means that I have activated the direction handles now as I pull I'm still holding click hold and drag now there's a direction handle it appears okay so now these are this is what the direction handles are these direction handles belong to this point all right now the direction handles are acting as one they can be uh, manipulated or controlled separately individually I can control this direction handle or I can control this direction handle and I'll show you this how I do that again 
So click, click and hold and drag. Click and hold and drag. Click and hold and drag. All right. Now I'm going to explain something here. <clears throat> okay. So the thing is, <clears throat> each point has its own direction handle. Right. Now I can control these direction handles. These direction handles are what I use to control uh, the curve from each point. Now I'll show you. If I click on this and I click and hold and drag. Now the direction handles control the uh, the curves by this. When you pull and drag, the length of the line determines the height or depth of the curve. See that? How high the curve goes? The, the longer I make this direction line, the higher the curve is going to be. Or the deeper it's going to be. The shorter it is, the, sh the more shallow the curve. The more con... See? The longer I pull, the more con concave it becomes, and so on. Right? So basically, you're manipulating the amplitude by the length of the line. Okay? more pull away. Now the angle of the line determines the direction or slope of the curve. So when I when I slide it to the right, notice the curve it leans to the left. When I slide it to the right, the curve leans to the left, the curve leans to the right, and so on, and vice versa. Alright? So there are two ways you, you pretty much manipulate curves by Pulling on, pulling on the, the, the direction handle, I'm still holding down the mouse. I haven't released yet. Once I release, I've pretty much told um, the pen tool that I'm done manipulating that curve, unless I want to go back in. All right? So that's it. Now, another th important thing to know is this. Now, the direction handle has two parts, right? There are two direction handles per, per anchor point. This direction handle um, is affecting this curve right now if I were to click somewhere else I'm gonna make a new curve now the curve I'm gonna create is affected by this handle so in other words I have to be conscious of the length and position of this curve before I make a new curve of this direction handle before I make a new curve so if I wanted to make a really a very short curve right here this direction handle would be too long and I'll show you why see that you see, the, you see the issue I'm having there with that curve? It's very difficult to manipulate. And that's because this direction handle is too long. So in other words, be aware of the fact that the direction handle on either side of a point affects the curve it's about to create. Like say, for example, this direction handle affects the curve I'm going to create next. See that? So <clears throat> if the direction handle is pointing downwards, and I want to make a curve that points upwards, I'm going to have a problem, and I'll show you why. So, in this case, the direction handle is pointing down. So if I'm making a curve that points down, it's good. See? That's good. Now, what if I'm making a curve that goes up? See? There's a problem. So what do you do? You have to manipulate the direction handle. Now, this is where the important thing comes in that a lot of people don't generally explain, and it's right here. Now, this is something I'm going to tell you that I'm not sure a lot of people generally tell you guys. When you're using the pen tool, it's almost essential that you have your fingers either on or very close to the command key and option key. I have command Z here, and that's, that's pretty much you know standard for undo. But you should have your fingers very close to the command key and the option key. Why? Because they're very essential in manipulating and using the pen tool. And I'll demonstrate first with the option key. The option key allows you to um, first activate direction handles. So let's use the pen pen tool. Okay, that that that. I'm not holding. Okay, that that. Now, the uh, the option key does several things, but three main important things. I'm gonna. The first one is it activates the direction handles on a given anchor point. Now, these anchor points are corner anchor points. They're not smooth anchor points because there's no curves there. Okay. Now, say for example, I want to make here a curve. I want to make this more like a C or an inverted C instead of a uh, V, right? So what I'd have to do, activate this anchor point, the, an the handles, the direction handles on this anchor point. So what do I do? I hold on option. See, notice when you hold on option, the nib changes to an inverted V. And it pretty much saying it's in conversion mode. And now by clicking and dragging and dragging, now I've activated the handles.